In this episode, I'm actually gonna give you four strategies that I've built that are extremely simple to understand and all beat the S&P 500 by some quite a substantial amount. Okay, in the past few episodes, we have been designing some pretty complex strategies. We've been using leveraged ETFs and mean reversion strategies, buying the dips and different accumulation returns, and we're doing on and off switches. And in this video, I wanna take the complete opposite direction. I wanna focus on the simplest strategies we can possibly build that still beat the S&P 500 and give us good returns and are stable. So today I've got actually two strategies, maybe three we'll go over, depends on how long this goes. But I wanna show you a very simple strategy that anybody can understand because there's literally only one or two uh, functions of the strategy to be used. And I also wanna introduce you into using fundamental screeners to find quality companies that you can add into your investment designs or your strategies that can amplify your returns. Because I know a lot of people use just the straight leveraged ETFs like the QQQ or the TTQQ. That's great. But a lot of times if you find good companies that are in those sectors, you can use the, that you can essentially search for that sector and then find the best companies in that sector and actually get uh, better returns than the overall uh, sector or industry ETF. So let's hop over here and uh, this strategy is called the top 100 and I will show you how I built this, but it has essentially the top 100 companies I could find in the US stock market. And there's a bunch here and the strategy is very simple. It's just a simple sort function. And we have an annualized return of 45% over a five year period. So I went ahead and only added companies that are at least five years old into this strategy. There is a high max drawdown of 56% standard deviation, uh, but this strategy specifically is just kind of for demonstration and testing purposes. I'm, I just want to see like what this strategy will do uh, fully as a sort function. And then the better thing to do is take this sort function and then add it into your more complicated strategy, your, your mean reversion strategies or your momentum strategies, your risk on parity strategies, and you can get outsized returns using that. And then the other strategy we're going to look at is the 2008 Alt Star Defense. And I think I'll show you guys one more. This is the beastly low beta strategy, and I will explain what beta is, but essentially it is a measurement of how much a company is influenced by the, the US stock market or the overall stock market. And these companies specifically have extremely low betas and they really don't care what the overall stock market is doing. They're just gonna do what they wanna do because they're not heavily correlated. And you can see that in the strategy design as it continues to go bullish even as the stock market is going down. But let's start with the top 100 strategy. So inside each one of these strategies, you will see an image gur over here and you can copy this link and then load it into your computer and you will see this this is finviz and if you're not familiar with finviz it's a great website to go to where you can use fundamental analysis to scan for companies with specific criteria that you're looking for now i'm going to walk you through this but i'm not going to get super in depth into it but what we're looking at is market cap over uh, 300 million, small caps and above. Typically, you want to, the higher the cap market capitalization of a company, typically the more secure it is seen as because it's more likely to be stable. Earnings, uh, EPS growth past five years is earnings per share growth over the past five years. So that means the amount of money the company is making based on the price of the, uh, the company is growing at least 5% over the past five years. Next, we have uh, price to free cash flow. This essentially looks at how much money, how, how efficient is the company with their money? Are they getting, are, is there cash left over on the table? H better, higher number equals better. Sales growth over the past five years, at least over 5%. We want companies that have a growing sales force because that means their company is growing. That's, that's important. Next, we're gonna look at quick ratio. Quick ratio is a measurement of short-term assets and, or sorry, short-term inventory and cash versus short-term debt. So it's essentially looking at uh, debt and uh, liquid assets within one year, can they be bought and sold? Like a higher quick ratio is good. That means that, for example, a one-to-one -one or a one quick ratio means the company has pretty much everything it needs to pay off its short-term debts. And then the lower you get, the less money they have liquid to pay off their debts, which can be a bad thing in recessionary scarcity times. 
Next up, we're looking at return on equity. This is pretty straightforward. This is the amount, uh, how efficient they are with their money and what is their capital that they're deploying into their company actually making a return. Same thing for return on investment. It looks at money being invested into the company. How good is that money uh, used and utilized for you the investor and then lastly we're looking at debt to equity under one this is similar to quick ratio but this is all outstanding debt and all equity of the company so anything under a one is good typically you want under 0.5 but i upped this to uh, 0.1 because it wasn't too crazy <laughs> but this essentially means that if a company goes under hard times extremely hard times and they have a low debt to equity that means they have no debt which is great because they don't owe anybody any money and that means they can run very lean and efficient during hard times in an economy so low debt to equity number is really good <laughs> lastly we're looking at float short this is just kind of a technical trading uh, scan it, it looks for companies that don't have a high short volume because we don't want to invest long term into a company that has a lot of short sellers trying to short the stock and push it down then lastly average volume over 300k ipo past five years the average volume is important because we want stocks and companies that are liquid we don't want companies that nobody trades because then there's going to be a large price gap between the bid and the ask and there can be liquidation issues if there's a mass sell-off or a market crash like so that's kind of a walk down through fundamental analysis i know that's really quick but if you guys want to experiment with these i highly recommend you start with those parameters you can change numbers if you want to experiment or get better companies i would reduce the debt to equity mess with the quick ratio and then lastly we're going to look at beta so this beastly low beta strategy, which uh, I'm not sure how many, com it's a lot less companies than the other one. You will notice very similar numbers here, but the one thing here is beta under 0.5. So all of these companies are very low correlated to the US stock market, which means it, these companies are a good defensive company to put your money into or can be a good company to put your money into because they don't care what the overall stock market is doing. They're just going to do what they want. It's kind of like Honey Badger. Now, lastly, we're going to look at how this sort function is built. So this one, the top 100, has 100 companies in here, and it actually s selects the bottom four. And this might sound odd to you, but we're looking at the 21 day relative strength index. And if you're not familiar with what the relative strength index is, we'll just go over to the SPY and you'll notice down here, this is the relative strength index. And I'm going to turn this to 21 and then we're gonna make this bigger. And what this sort function does is it actually looks for, it looks through all 100 of these companies and it finds the bottom four that have the lowest RSI and it buys those. And you might think, why would you want to, why would, wouldn't you want to buy like the best company or the highest company or the one with the highest cumulative returns? It, in fact, no. Uh, as I've been experimenting and learning and studying, when it, this is essentially mean reversion. What you want to do with these kind of sort functions is you want to have really good companies in the sort function. Like you know that they're good companies fundamentally and they're growing and they're going to be moving up in the stock market over the next couple of years. But you want to buy the ones that are temporarily down and have dipped because they have a higher potential for return on the upside. So on the macro level, you're buying a company that is moving up because it's good company and it's fun it got good fundamentals, but you're buying the bottom four that are lowest for whatever reason, whether that's news or whatever, just technical stuff. And you're buying the dip essentially. It's, it's mean reversion. It's no different than some of the other strategies that we've done. It's just much simpler. And then you're max, you're getting the profit on that upside. You don't want to buy the best companies in that sort function because they have a higher potential for coming down because they're already overpriced. So that is the sort function. And then the beastly ones is a 15 day relative strength index and we're buying the bottom six. And then if we go over to this last one, which is the 2008 all-star defense, this strategy is actually a little bit more complicated. We, we added into this one, a 200 day move average of the SPY. And essentially this looks at the bullish bearishness. This is an on off strategy or a risk parity strategy or a momentum strategy. And this golden line right here is the 200 SMA. So when the mark, when the stock market is above the 200, we are bullish. So pretty much like all of this time, we are bullish. 
and we are buying either the QQQ or the SPY. And we're also doing a 40 day relative strength index and we're buying the bottom one. So whichever one has the lowest RSI, that's the one we're buying. So we can kind of play the parity again. Then lastly, if the, if the S&P 500 is bearish like it is right now and, we, and the price is under the 200, then we are going to switch to the 2008 All-Star Defense. And these companies are actually the top 10 best performing companies during 08, during the housing market crash. And I figured it'd be interesting just to to see you know how are they going to fare during this time's bear market recession and as you can see they're doing pretty good um this the strategy beats the s p 500 pretty significantly even during the bull market it was beating it because of its rsi dip buying and then uh, it's doing really well during this bear market right now. And on top of that, I added one more ticker into this. This is the DBC uh, Commodities Index, just to have a little bit of diverse diversity defensively in this short function. And I will go ahead and show you guys the uh, Finviz screener. If you go over to Finviz and just hit screener, you can go to all here. And this will give you all of the parameters that you want to uh, search by. But if you want to do specific sectors, like I know there's a lot of strategies out there for the QQQ and the TQQQ, we can actually go into technology and you can even select specific industries inside of technology if you want to. And we can start finding companies that are really good. Usually I like to start with debt to equity because, you know, you don't want to have a high level of debt in this time period return on equity let's start with over 20 percent and let's start with over 10 percent so we're down to about 71 companies we're going to keep dropping this down more let's see if we can find any with low betas uh we got a few let's do under one beta so we got 24 now let's just go ahead and build a strategy real quick okay so i'm going to go ahead and add all of these companies into the composer and the quickest way to do this is just to split your screen and have two windows and just you have to manually type them out kind of takes a minute especially if you build one with a hundred different tickers okay after adding a few i had to delete like i think three of them because they weren't around back then but as you can see i added the spy and the qqq in here because most people use a qqq as their investment strategies but anybody that's doing qqq uh auto strategies or mean strategies you can use this simple sort function now inside of your strategies and get much better outsized returns than just a straight qqq uh, so fundamental analysis can also be used in these um, kind of technical trading style uh, strategies at to very good effect we've got an annualized return here of 53 percent max drawdown of only 39 standard deviation of 28 but uh, we need our Sartino ratio uh, ratio in this. The standard deviation isn't great to use. Calmer ratio of 1.36, which is phenomenal. But yeah, you guys can now, you got four symphonies now, and I'll call this a better, a better QQQ. So you guys can take this sort function and add it into your strategies. And I will also screenshot this Finviz sort so that you guys can mess with it if you want. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I know it was pretty simple, but that's the point. And if you like this video, please share it. Please, please post it anywhere you can. It helps this channel grow tremendously because all of my f videos have been getting flagged from YouTube and I can't advertise any of them for some reason. And if you guys have any questions, hit me up on Instagram. That's where I'm most active. There'll be links in my description. So I know this has been kind of a quick and simple video here for you guys, but I wanted to make it quick and simple. And the things to take away from this episode is you can take this knowledge and these lessons and sort functions and using fundamental analysis and add them into your more complicated strategies. So if you have dip buying strategies or if you're buying, uh, if you're using an RSI mean reversion strategy or if you have an on off switch with a 200 EMA or you're doing some kind of measurement of uh, overbought oversold in the market or bearishness bullishness and momentum you can use these sort functions to find companies that can better perform than the overall sector or industry etf